Mm -hmm. Let's see if we get anything. It thinks we're streaming. And I want to know if there's audio. There is audio. Good. Uh, so this is going to be a quick one, I hope. Uh, so aside from my atrocious clothing, uh, right now you're looking at the backside of a Panasonic uh, Mark I CF19 Toughbook. Uh, so one of these really hard and rugged uh, industrial PCs. Uh, and uh, this thing is in excellent uh, condition. It works really, really well, uh, despite its age. It's uh, coming on 20 years old, uh, but the touchscreen doesn't work. Uh, and uh, I thought, well, no harm in poking around a bit and having a look. And I think I might have uh, come up with an idea of what might be wrong with it. Uh, so usually when you're uh, troubleshooting uh, something like this, you're going to be looking at... Well, that's not where I want to be. That's where I want to be. Uh, you're going to be suspecting like the uh, uh, controller. And this is the touchscreen controller right here. And this seems to be working just fine. Uh, it's uh, detected by USB, uh, everything seems to be okay with this. But the symptom the device has is uh, there's just nothing on the touchscreen at all. Uh, it won't uh, register any touches anywhere, uh, no matter what you do, no matter how hard you just poke at it, uh, it's, it's just not going to go. Uh, and that's a bit weird, because usually when the actual touch panel goes bad, uh, it uh, will have been overused by rough technicians and it's going to be sort of uncalibrated and it's not just going to register stuff in uh, the wrong uh, places uh, and, and it's just going to be unusable for that reason. But you very rarely see a condition where the controller seems to work, work fine but uh, the screen is completely dead. That's very unusual. Uh, so I started uh, having a look at the wiring, uh, because the way these resistive touchscreens work is they're basically built around uh, plastic which has some metalized coatings on it in various places. And uh, I started with my microscope, that's my microscope. Uh, I started having a look at the uh, connector. Hang on, let's orient ourselves. Uh, so uh, the way this entire thing goes together, by the way, uh, just so you guys have a clue, is uh, the controller goes there. Uh, on this side, there's USB and power. On that side is uh, resistive touch panel. So this is the wiring to the actual touch panel. And uh, what I realized was that this connector looks a bit sad. Uh, it's going to probably be a bit of a pain getting this uh, to show up on camera, but we'll give it uh, a good old try. Uh, let's see. So this is a bit of an unusual connector design, but they've actually opted to bond some gold fingers to uh, the actual uh, connector uh, or to the actual wiring. Uh, so, I have a field of view of this microscope, is so bad. Uh, so, uh, we have uh, the uh, plastic film here, which has a sort of metal powder coating uh, adhered to it. I probably just deposited that with some sort of uh, silk uh, shadow mask sort of dealy. Uh, and that's then got some sort of adhesive which bonds it to these gold fingers. And these gold fingers go into a connector on the actual uh, controller, and uh, that's how the controller reads uh, the screen. You get varying uh, resistances between these pins. Now, what I did to start suspecting this area was uh, you're supposed to see some resistance between these while it's just sitting around, uh, and uh, I just saw nothing. So then I took my good old uh, blade and sort of poked up that, and you can see we get just a tiny bit of the actual coating there, uh, which I was able to shove a probe against. And uh, if we measure uh, between this gold finger and this metalized little silvery thing there, there's actually no connection. Uh, so I took with my blade and just made a rip right there on this one, 
and then there was a connection. So I'm thinking what might happen to this thing is uh, there's just a, a sort of adhesive. They can't solder onto this film. It's uh, not Teflon. It's just going to melt. Uh, so they use an adhesive to bond the metallized coating of the plastic to the gold finger. And what I think has happened is uh, the classic failure on this sort of thing, uh, where uh, the adhesive has just uh, sort of uh, failed to see the stop being conductive, or it's just let go, and allowed uh, there to be an air gap between the two sides. Uh, so I figured we'd do a bit more testing uh, as soon as I notice this. I set up for streaming because this is going to be probably a bit interesting. Uh, so let's uh, bring the meter in there. Now if we put a probe on a fixed one. Yeah, you, you're, you're never going to be in focus. Sorry. Uh, this should go beep if we short the probes. I hope you can hear that beeping. And now if we poke it onto a metalized film there, it goes beep because I've ripped through there. But if we go on this one, so gold finger to gold finger works. But if we get the metalized little exposed thing there, there's absolutely nothing. Uh, until probably I press down really hard and we penetrate the adhesive. And then it's going to make a connection. Now the other ones I like this as well. So gold to gold, completely fine. But gold to metalized film, nothing. And we know that uh, this metalized film is conductive to the probe because uh, on this one uh, we can very easily uh, make a beef there. Uh, so I figured I'd just do a slice on each of these, uh, just prod them with uh, the knife, uh, then sort of haphazardly put this thing back together and we'd fire it up and see if the touch screen is going to come to life. Now people are actually showing up in chat. Oh, station 240, hello. It's been a while. Fluffy Floof, hello. Mjernix, howdy. Uh, station 240 says bonding failure. Yep. And Fluffy Floof says great hair, by the way. It looks nice on you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I just sort of started growing, growing it out uh, when a certain someone told me I should. Uh, so anyway, let's get to stabbing. I'm just going to take my blade and uh, sort of poke holes uh, through the entire thing here. And we'll see if we can re-establish a connection by just uh, stabbing through all this. How permanent this is going to be? I have no idea if it's even going to work at all. Right, so we saw that there was no connection to that one before. Let's uh, beep it again and see if that's changed. So, probe goes on there. No, we still have no connection there. Hmm. This is definitely intermittent. That's concerning. If we can't stab this properly, then we're probably not going to be able to fix it. Let's see. Uh, Try it again. Use a bit more force. Hmm. I can definitely see the metal film actually lifting up on this one relative to the backing plate. Hmm. I'm really hoping that we're going to be able to just step our way through this. 
That seems increasingly unlikely. Well, we'll have to leave that one of that, really. Uh, I can't stab at it much more because it's just going to fall apart. So we'll move on to the rest, and if nothing else, we can we might be able to get a cough out of a touchscreen, then we'll have uh, some idea that uh, there's some credence to the diagnosis, at least. So let's uh, do a slice. Like so. My probes are not giving me an easy time. Yeah, I'm not happy with the result of this one either. There it went just because I prodded it with a probe there. This one is also not doing a thing. John's touchpad is in the chat saying, hello all, what's happened to the last repair? Uh, I had to just uh, finish that up off stream. Didn't really, and not, nothing much more interesting happened. I just uh, put it, replaced the caps, put it back together and it worked fine. I tested some efficiency on it just for fun and it was like 85% efficient, which is terrible. VLK DC DC. Uh, but it's back in the car now. I'm sorry, I just uh, did not have time to stream that. Alright, so let's see what this one does. And that one has connection now. I'm quite sure. This one is still dicky. This one really does not want to play along. Maybe that's going to go. Now that one is fine. Okay. Let's uh, put the controller back in and see if we can at least make it cough. If I can... Uh, no, that's not where I want to be. That's where I want to be. If I can at least uh, see this thing sort of jitter around a bit, I'm going to be uh, satisfied that uh, I know what's wrong with it. And uh, yeah, it's probably just a question of getting a new touchscreen for it if I want to fix it. Very careful here now. Where'd my tweezers go? Okay, that's uh, back in. So let's... Uh, I want it put a couple of screws back into the hinge here because this thing is this thing is uh, gonna be a bit fragile to get the LCD back cover off you need to uh, remove actually that's just gonna long screw the case so we'll have to make do with two screws I really don't want to damage this. This is going to be interesting. Uh, 
it's a bit dark for the time being. Sadly, this thing has operated uh, its entire life at max brightness, so the screen is a bit sad. They can see a little bit of something in there. Hey! Haha! -ha. I think we were onto something. Let's uh, give you guys a bit of a better shot of that. And let's just uh, log in. Right, so let's. Oh God. There's a desktop and. It's difficult for you to see, but we actually do have a working touchscreen. Is it going to work consistently all over? Uh, let's grab something a bit better at poking. Yeah, but it seems to be working just fine now. It's not calibrated, so I wouldn't expect it to be perfectly tracking, but this is working absolutely fine. Beautiful. No, I don't want sticking it. I want calculator. Can we do? There we go. Beautiful. Uh, so, I've asked that another question is if I should just put it back together. Uh, as is, it's probably not going to last too long. Uh, because that bonding is going to go bad again. Uh, so, there really is no good way of fixing this, sadly. It's more or less a lost cause. Uh, but at least we have a proper diagnosis, and uh, that's what I came for. I, when I started this, I just wanted to figure out once and for all what's wrong with this thing, because it's been bothering me a lot. Hmm. No. To fix that sort of thing, man do a more proper job, you'd really have to just sort of clamp them together with something. We could, actually, if we zoom down, we could potentially put a little bit of backing material behind the connector and uh, then some kind of foam pad uh, on uh, the screen backing plate. This is a very sturdy uh, metal backing plate. Uh, so this is going to clamp down very well. Uh, so we could just put something like that, but I'm not sure. It would be backing up against this soft material there, and uh, I don't think it would... Uh, I think it would just flex itself to death just because this stuff is so soft. And uh, there's probably going to be some flexing in the entire thing when you manhandle it. Hmm. So, man. I don't want to send this thing on a trajectory where the touch is just going to fail again if I can help it. Hmm. Let's see what uh, the chat's got to say. Maybe you guys have some good idea. Janne, hey, no says tjenare. Moi, moi, moi. Fluffy Fluff says, it seems this flex is attached to four separate wires. A few more repair options. Well, it's a four-wire resistive touchscreen. That's just uh, how they work. 
uh, station 240 says maybe that one signal you couldn't get to connect is ground uh, none of them were connecting from the start i think i think they all actually connect right now uh, just barely they're, they're just gonna slowly die again with thermal cycles and such hmm those separate wires look like a micro-soldering job, uh, Munich says. Uh, you can't solder on this stuff because the backing plastic is uh, too soft and uh, God only knows what the actual material in the wires is. I don't think it's solderable. Uh, it's not like one of those uh, yellowish flat flexes you see. This is a completely different beast. Uh, Christian Ivarsson says, mine had a digitizer that didn't work without the pen, so nothing is guaranteed. Uh, yeah, this is uh, not the digitizer model. It's uh, it's the resistive touch model. Uh, Station 240 says, medieval torture device for a bonding. Well, we did just stab it repeatedly. Uh, hot snot. I don't think uh, hot glue is going to work because that's going to melt uh, the plastic probably and it's not going to provide any positive pressure. Uh, like ideally we want like a spring which would clip around the wire and uh, uh, just squeeze the entire uh, bonding area together. And uh, I really don't have any idea of how how we might how we might do that like a tiny bit of foam underneath there and something to squeeze it, it which would attach to this plastic maybe hmm you know that might actually work if we take a bit of foam and put it underneath that then we just uh, use this board is positively affixed to this soft plastic here if we don't then just push the entire assembly down uh, the board is going to press down against the bonding sites and that would probably help longevity i think that's what we're gonna do i think that's what we're gonna do so let's just grab some random ESD foam. This is roughly the right thickness even. I will cut out a square. Get rid of the edge there. This is also how you use to repair uh, LCD TVs where uh, the, the wires used to debond from the actual glass. I've put ESD frame in so many of those and just squeezed it together with a glass, no, with a frame. Uh, right, so well, this really needs to be quite short because of a bend of a wire. I want to do two layers roughly like so and we'll take this up like so and insert our foam Come on. And that's one. I think we want two. No, two is actually going to be too thick. I think one is going to be not thick enough. I think we're going to try to force two pieces down there. 
anyway. There we go. Two pieces of foam going underneath the connector. Now we just gently pull that down. Now that is providing pressure onto the bonding site. And now we can probably. Hmm, I still like to have something to just push that down to keep it all together. But I don't think that's going to be very feasible, although we could just uh, take some more, just a little bit more foam and just squeeze it up against the back case. I think that might be the most sane option. I don't know how thick the back case is. Well, let's just go with like two layers of foam. I don't want to actually bend the LCD panel. That would be bad. I don't want like a pressure spot in this corner. So we'll take like a double folded piece of foam and some tape of suitable denomination. I think aluminium tape is a weird choice for this, but I think that's what's going to adhere best to both the plastic and the foam. So we'll use a bit of uh, Tessa aluminium tape. If we can, uh, if we can actually get the backing off. There we go. And we'll put that to the side for the time being, I need to make sure we have the right size of foam. I can't have it be too wide or it's just going to catch on these two ledges there. There's the top foam and some L tape on top to keep that in place. Oh God, I do not want to tape the actual wire. That's a bad life choice. No, don't, don't do that. All right, I think that's uh, going to provide ample pressure because uh, the back case is going to come down and sort of press that together, thus pressing our knife scratches together inside the failed bonding point. Uh, so hopefully this is going to be reasonably durable now. Uh, Mina B says, missed the start of the stream. What's the issue with this thing? Uh, this uh, is a resist resistive touchscreen uh, where the uh, connector, it's a four pin connector here, where they've bonded uh, a metallized film on uh, soft plastic to some gold fingers to make a connector. And the adhesive, there's conductive adhesive between uh, the metallized film and the gold fingers in the connector. And uh, that adhesive has failed and separated, ma making it so that there's just no connection from the actual connector to the bonding wire. Uh, and uh, that, that just makes it so that the touchscreen is completely dead 
even though the controller is working fine. Uh, so what, what I've done is I've taken my uh, little uh, breakaway blade, I've scratched between the, or rather scratched through the plastic film, so that it's just a big mess of stuff making a connection uh, to the gold fingers, and now we're putting some pressure on that uh, to make sure it actually allows that connection to remain and doesn't just separate again in the future. Uh, so that's what we're doing, and I guess now we're just going to put the back case back on and uh, we're going to see if it's actually going to work and if it's uh, actually going to yeah, it's definitely pressing up against uh, the foam, I can feel it and now everyone can see uh, what this thing has been, it's been a Hyundai, a diagnostic PC in its past life. Uh, that's probably just a tough book logo underneath this sticker. Uh, right, so let's just uh, do some uh, bare minimum bolting together of this and uh, we'll pair it back up and uh, see if the touchscreen still works. You'll have to bear with me because there is uh, roughly one million screws on this thing. And I need to remember where they all go. These tough books, they are, they are nice. I, I like them. This thing is completely ancient, but uh, it, uh, it, it, it's completely serviceable still in low power applications. I want to have it as a sort of basic field diagnostics computer for random stuff. It's very handy to have a PC that's like reasonably moisture proof when you're out doing stuff often in the rain. Right, so that can keep the case slightly together. So let's uh, power it back on and uh, see if we still have a touchscreen. And we need to go dark. Panasonic. I've spent so much time just uh, trying to figure out if it's the drivers not working for Windows 7 because getting drivers for this thing uh, in anything more modern than Windows XP is uh, basically impossible. It's all weird, uh, hacky Windows XP drivers put into Windows 7. Hey, would you look at that? Well, it's a tiny, you can't see it properly, but... Jeez, the angle of this LCD is not great. We definitely have a reasonably ac accurate touchscreen. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. It seems to be tracking nice and straight as well. I, I, I would imagine this screen actually failed fairly early on in this a computer's career because this screen, when I got it, even though this had been like a workshop computer, uh, it wasn't all smudged up on the screen, it was fairly clean. Uh, so I think this touchscreen has not worked for many, many years. But yeah. I don't mind that at all. Beautiful. That is such a relief. Uh, these. Uh, this particular model is also fairly reliant on the touch uh, touchscreen because the touchpad is horrible. You really need to smudge your finger down there in order to get it to do anything. So trying to use this thing without the touchscreen is really, really frustrating because you're constantly just rubbing up against the touchpad. Yeah, so there you go. If uh, uh, anyone else in the world happens upon this problem, that's a reasonable chance that you just have a bonding failure. And uh, let's just go through the chat before we finish this up, because I'm not going to bore you with a reassembler for one million screws. 
Uh, and then, then we'll be good. Uh, what if Luth says, putting a rubbery squishy pad to apply pressure to components, genuine of Apple authorized repair method. Indeed. Should put an Apple sticker on this. Christian Everson says, there are connectors meant for crimping onto FPCs, but I've only seen them with pin headers. But I have no idea where to buy them. Maybe something like that could be sourced. Uh, maybe, but like the ones that you see in like cheaper touchscreens, uh, they have a, the wrong pin spacing for this particular connector. You'd have to have some really special, special thing. This is not a 0.254 millimeter spacing. Mm. <laughs> Jan Heijn says, it's the Hryandu sticker that made it fail. Uh, and Joe Jeff says, please fix me next. Uh, sorry, I don't do biology. But yeah, we're done for once. A quick success. Goodbye.